All right, we're back for another splitting field problem. Here we have the splitting field of x to the fourth plus x squared plus one, which we immediately know is a quadratic. Right? It doesn't look like one, it's fourth power, but if we make the substitution z equals x squared, then x to the fourth plus x squared plus one is z squared plus z plus one. Cool. I know how to find the roots of this quadratic. So the roots of z squared plus z plus 1. Well, again, we know these are the third roots of unity. So recall, if you had z cubed minus 1, you could factor that as z minus 1 times z squared plus z plus 1. So we know that the roots of z cubed minus 1 are 1, e to the 2 pi i over 3, and e to the 4 pi i over 3. So the roots on the right must be the same. Well, 1 is the root of z minus 1, and so the roots of z squared plus z plus 1 are e to the 2 pi i over 3, and e to the 4 pi i over 3. Okay, so those are the roots. Okay, so uh, just for Simplicity now, I'll just write this as, as alpha, say. Um, so, and this one now is alpha squared. So the roots of z squared plus z plus 1 are going to be alpha and alpha squared. Okay, but I wanted the roots of x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1. Okay, well, I know that z is equal to x squared. So my roots are going to be the square roots of these. Right? So I'm going to raise them to the 1 half power. So the roots of x to the fourth plus x squared plus one are going to be, well, of course, there's plus or minus here. So plus or minus alpha to the one half, and then plus or minus alpha squared to the one half, which is just alpha. And well, if we rewrite it in terms of our exponentials, this will be plus or minus e to the, well, let's see, two pi i over three, that was our alpha. Raise it to the 1 half, and you'll just get pi i over 3. And then, well, we know the alpha, again, plus or minus e to the 2 pi i over 3. Okay, fine, we found our, our four roots. So now, if we want the splitting field of x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1 over q, I'm going to take q and I'll adjoin these roots. Now, we saw in the previous video, when you do a plus or a minus, it, you really only need to put one of them. So I'm just going to adjoin the plus versions of these roots. Now, once I have e to the pi i over 3, I automatically will get e to the 2 pi i over 3. I just have to square this element. So in fact, I don't really need to write them both down. I can just write q adjoin e to the pi i over 3. All right, uh, this could be enough, but let's say you wanted to write it even simpler. Well, let's work out what e to the pi i over 3 is. So we know that e to the pi over 3 is going to be cosine of pi over 3 plus i sine of pi over 3. And let's see, cosine of pi over 3 is a half. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So this will be root 3 over 2i. Okay, so that means we can substitute that back into our splitting field. Write this as a half plus root 3 over 2i. Of course, we don't really need to write this half. That's just a rational number. If I add negative a half, I just get root 3 over 2i. And if I had root 3 over 2i and added a half, I'd get back to this number. So I can just ignore that one half, right? Root 3 over 2i. Similarly, I'm dividing by 2. That's just a rational operation. I could ignore doing that too. I just multiply by 2, I'll get root 3i. OK. 